All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover what it takes to get a field find or a barn find started if nothing goes wrong, let's say. Okay, so we're gonna pretend that we don't know if this tractor runs. We just rolled it up on a trailer, brought it home with us, and we're gonna see what happens. Uh, so first thing I always do is, you, you know, you look and see if the fuel is on, okay? If somebody left the fuel on and you've got a bunch of sediments like this one here, you know, then you probably are going to have a fight on your hands because it probably means your tank's dirty. Um, sometimes I look in the tank first, but either way, you're still looking at what you got to work with. So you go in here and you look at the tank. Let's see if you got a bunch of nasty fuel in there, or if it's rusty, or what you got to work with. Alright. Oh, okay. Then, you're going to want to look. You, that's assuming you already know that the engine's not stuck. And most of these, you, you can grab the fan, and you can roll them in neutral. Just like that. They're not hard to turn. So, it's not stuck. You've looked at the fuel system. So, if you don't know what the condition of the fuel system is, as far as if it's flowing fuel or not, just crack this fuel line over here on the carburetor. Just crack this nut here. By crack, I mean loosen it. You might have to pull the line back a little bit. And see if fuel comes out. Fuel comes out, you know you got fuel. So, all right, you got gas flowing then next step is you get a battery so the question is there's no battery in it how do you know if it's 6 volt or 12 volt for that matter how do you know if it's positive ground or negative ground so a good indication whether it's 6 or 12 volt is you come around here and you look up in here and you see if you've got a generator or an alternator. So there's an alternator. And another giveaway is there's a ballast resistor. So this tractor is 12 volt. I know that. But, you know, if you didn't know and you put a 6 volt battery in it, you know, it's probably going to run. But, you, if, you, if it's 6 volt and you put a 12 volt battery in it, you could damage some stuff. And it, it might not run. Because the other, way to, the other thing you need to look at, this is the key to knowing your polarity, whether it's positive ground or negative ground. Look at the wire coming from the distributor here, which post of the coil it's going to. So on this one, I don't know if you can see that. That's the negative side. So we know this is negative ground because the points are the ground to the frame of the tractor. And the power is coming on the positive side. If that makes sense. So that'll tell you right there. Um, I've never heard of someone doing a 12 volt conversion and leaving it positive ground. It's definitely possible. But with the alternators we have here in this country it's not very common because everybody uses a gm one wire um i did say one while back that had a chrysler alternator on it which is a lot more complicated but you know if you were in another country i know lots of lots of uh english cars still used uh positive ground like mgs and that kind of stuff even up into the 12 volt era um there's nothing wrong with positive ground. Uh, people try to tell you it. there is things wrong with it. But and there's nothing wrong with it being 6 volt either. Uh, I got two 6 volt tractors. And I use them all the time. Never have a problem out of them. I got two 12 volt tractors. Same thing. Never have a problem out of them. Um, so, you got fuel. We know what kind of battery to put in it. So, put the battery in it. Now, what you on the battery, 
before you just go crazy hooking it up take your cable end and just tap it you can tap it on the side top whatever but just tap it and make sure it doesn't shoot sparks and fire at you so I know this one's good but if it throws sparks and stuff you need to reevaluate the situation you know as a insulation destroyed on a cable like that and it's on a positive cable and it's touching something you know what's going on something short and out is the starter button stuck you know what's going on so assuming you hook the cables up and nothing goes wrong before you before you really turn the fuel on just let the fuel run you should realistically get your battery squared away you should if if the hand crank drive is m movable if you can actually make it work i recommend you can put a, a crescent wrench pipe wrench or if you have a hand crank most m's don't come with a hand crank but if you can do that i would recommend turning the motor over by hand a couple of revolutions if it's been set in a long time just make sure no valves are stuck It'll kind of give you an indication you know, if you run into a hard spot you probably have a stuck valve that or you know or something's wrong something's built a nest somewhere you know mice get in the strangest places but assuming we're going to assume that your engine turns over fine and that you don't have any stuck valves so assuming that You've got your battery, engine turns over, so we're still not turning the fuel on though. You're gonna evaluate your operator's platform. So this one, as you can see, this one has a key. Uh, if it's a, if it's just a regular M, then it will probably have a push button right here. And it's, this one had one a long time ago, I'm sure. If it's a super tractor, it may have a, a push-pull button up here in the box, in the, in the light box. Uh, that's the way my Super H is. Uh, so that's going to be your ignition on-off. So you want to examine the wiring, obviously, going to that. Um, next thing you want to look at is... Like this one, you get a foot starter right here. So let's see, we're in neutral. So you want to just just bump that. All right, it turns. Starter button works. Cool. Now, some of these tractors, especially if it was a hand crank tractor, not a electric start tractor, there was a lot of these things made pre-war, you know, pre-World War II, or you know, even the during World War II, it was kind of hard to get copper and things. A lot of them were done without starters originally, and then were retrofitted later. Uh, my my grandpa told me stories of his dad bought a John Deere during the war, and it came out hand start, and it had you know when the when the war ended, all the shortages recovered. You know, or late forties ish. The John Deere dealer called him and said, hey, come and get your stuff. He says, what stuff? He said, your electric start kit and your lights. So he didn't even know that they were coming or had forgotten it, one or the other. And so all the, the starter, the new flywheel, battery box, all that stuff came in after, you know, that stuff was readily available again. So I've never heard of internationals being that way, but anything's possible but so if it's a if it's a non-electric star tractor maybe a pre-war tractor i'm not sure exactly what but sometimes you'll have a box that's mounted up here or just a plate really with a push button on it sometimes you got that and then once in a great while you'll see them that have a key switch kind of like this one that they've wired in a starter solenoid so it's like a car and you just turn the key to turn the motor over but anyway so now you know how to turn turn the motor over you know how to turn your spark on so now we're going to see if we have sparks so we're going to turn the key on 
and we're gonna walk around here take your main center wire off right here just pop that off there all right like I said we got the key turned on let's see if we can see this now if you got a second person with you they can hit the starter button that works or you can just turn the motor over by hand which is what I'm getting ready to do well that's not gonna work there. did you see that So you turn the motor over like that, and you obviously, you don't have to turn it over on the starter. You can, obviously, but you, you can roll it by hand and hear it, but just put it somewhere where it can ground. So if it doesn't spark, then your next step is to make sure you have spark at the coil, or I mean power at the coil. So you want to take a test light, ground a test light, stab it there oh i got spark or i got power you know it lights up right so you got power make sure this wire is in good shape take your coil wire off pop that clip pop the lower clip and we're gonna look at the cap cap looks decent not a major amount of corrosion you know Pop the rotor off. And there's only one way these can go on, so don't worry about that. So, rotor looks okay. And you get a dust cover here, like that. It just pops off. Sometimes those can be really hard to get off. Alright, so we're going to look at, we got points. So, now, not all tractors will have points. A lot have been converted to electronic ignition, especially recently. So, this one's still got points. So, what you want to look at is the contact surface between the points hard to get my camera in there but where they touch right there if there's a bunch of corrosion in there take your little file you can still get them at the parts store it's called a points file or you know nail file works you can, sometimes you, if it's not too bad you can scrape them off with a pocket knife you know just normal something get in there clean that up and then try again so if you take your coil wire just put it just like we were testing our spark all right we'll turn our key back on if you take this contact point and you just pop it open see hear that i don't know if you can see it i can hear it I don't see where it's sparking from. Anyway, you can just flip those points and it'll spark if it's working. And you can check your spark like that. So now we're going to put this back together. We got spark. And the dust cover just goes in there. There's a little felt washer. Like I said, the rotor, stick the rotor on until it finds its little happy spot. There it goes, like that. cap kind of is the same way just hold it up there and rotate it a little bit you'll find there's a little notch that it sets in and hook both your clips on maybe hook your coil wire back up okay that kind of does it for ignition we got a visitor at the painted turtle pretty good size one for around here don't see turtles very much all right so we have fuel we have spark motor turns over I think we're ready to just try to start it so You always want to start one from in the seat if possible, especially on something you don't know what's going to happen. Um, 
you want to obviously make sure you're in neutral turn your spark on I usually give mine about half throttle right in there um, if it's a tractor that's not been started in a while you're probably gonna want to give it some choke you just pull this ring like that now don't choke it too much because you'll flood it and it's really easy to flood these they have a huge vent tube and it'll suck a ton of fuel with that shut okay spark on throttle now some every tractor has its own thing some of them like to start at half throttle some of them like to start it wide open you know it just depends some of them like need a ton of choke some of them need no choke uh, this particular tractor is in need of a major carb rebuild so it's probably it's going to stumble and cough until it cleans up it's over fueling pretty bad but it runs so here we go well maybe and there you are 